Undertale. It's amazing. Like, this game's story is incredible, and I really enjoyed experiencing it. But, in this video, you won't be experiencing the usual Undertale storyline. That is because I played both the pacifist and the genocide route of this game and mixed them together in this video to get a somewhat new story, so this video can be enjoyed by both those who have and those who haven't experienced the story of Undertale. My story started when I fell down a hole, and while normally this kind of fall would be certain death, some pretty yellow flowers saved me. When I moved on because climbing back up was pretty much impossible, and sitting still was not really an option if you wanted to go home, I encountered this talking flower. It introduced itself as Flowey, and while a talking flower would normally scare me, because of the smile it gave me and the fact that it looked exactly like the flowers that saved me from my fall earlier, I felt at comfort. But that comfort nearly got me killed. Flowey told me my soul was weak, but to strengthen it, all I had to do was accept his friendliness pellets to obtain LV and strengthen my soul. The pellets came shooting at me, but instead of my soul strengthening, it drained, as those friendliness pellets were definitely not friendly. I was completely surrounded, while on my dying breath the pellets Flowey threw at me with an evil smile came closer and closer, all while he was screaming about having to kill or be killed. But luckily someone came to save me, a kind person named Toriel. She acted like she was my mother, showing me around how to solve the puzzles and befriend the creatures of the ruins. But I didn't want to stay in the ruins, so why teach me all this? Couldn't she just show me the way out? Eventually Toriel went to do something and told me to stay put, but I followed her. I found out she was trying to keep me here, since all those who have left her care in the past died by the hands of the monsters outside the ruins. I understood where she came from, but I wanted to go home. She tried to convince me to stay, but I wanted to leave, so I did. But in the halls, I encountered Flowey again. He started talking about working together, that we are the same. He started mocking Toriel and told me we should turn everyone to dust together, but I was confused. I had never hurt a single soul in my entire life and still, this murderous, psychotic Flower was saying we were the same. After leaving the ruins, I found myself in a forest and met Sans, a skeleton that loves making bad jokes. We got along pretty well, the fact that he didn't immediately try to kill me being the main reason. He also asked if I could help him with something. He said that his brother called the Pyrus was feeling down and seeing a human for the first time would definitely cheer him up. And I think seeing me really made Papyrus' day, even though every puzzle he threw at me didn't really work. Then he tried to actually fight me, but just like his puzzles, I beat him. When I moved further, I had my first encounter with a scary knight that uses some blue glowing spear as a weapon. Immediately after the encounter, I learned that the knight's name was Undyne, from a kid who was apparently hiding in the bush with me while it all happened. But I think Undyne heard the conversation between me and the kid, because when I got across some water, with no way to go back, Undyne appeared out of nowhere and started chasing me while throwing her spears. I went to hide in some tall grass, and when Undyne was about to catch me, she found the kid instead, letting me off easy for now. But while I was exploring the area after the second encounter with Undyne, I saw that flower again. I think it's following me, but I don't know why. I tried to forget our interaction, but it just keeps coming back. Then I got to this ledge I couldn't get over. The kid helped me up there, saying they would find a different way around, so I kept going. But when I did that, Undyne found me. She chased me around in this maze-like place, making her almost infinite number of spears appear at my feet. I thought I got away, but then her spears took away the platform under me, making me fall into what I thought was the abyss. Luckily, it wasn't the abyss. After a great fall, I ended up in a garbage dump where I met this unnecessarily angry dummy. He didn't do much, but it was still an interesting encounter. Then I ended up in some weird place where it was really hard to see. I could touch some lanterns or something to light up the place, but even that wasn't permanent. After I got through that section, I found myself in a hall. At the end of that hall, I found one of those strange blue flowers that replicates the voices it heard last. When I touched it, I heard an ominous voice say, it was Undyne. She was about to kill me when the monster kid jumped out of the bushes next to us out of excitement for seeing Undyne in action. After a little while, the kid realized that Undyne's spear was pointed at me. While the kid was showing their confusion, Undyne dragged them away, letting me off the hook again. Eventually, the kid confronted me at a bridge. They said Undyne told them I hurt a lot of people, that I had to stop, and if I wanted to hurt anybody else, I had to go through the kid first. 
In my confusion, I left, just to find Undyne waiting for me, ready to fight. This was for me a pretty hard battle. She introduced me to some new way of fighting, where I have to use some sort of barrier to block the spear she throws from every angle. But that wasn't the reason this fight was so hard. The reason this fight was so hard is because I didn't know how to spare her, and it took like a whole hour of worthless fighting for me to figure out that I could run away when my soul became red again. So, when I got the chance, I ran away as fast as possible until I finally shook her off when I reached Hotland. In the Hotlands, I found a lab in which I met Alphys, a lizard scientist that reminds me a bit of the kid. Only Alphys does have arms. Apparently, Alphys had been observing my journey and wanted to help me through the Hotlands. The only problem being that she made an entertainment robot. But before my arrival, she had installed a few anti-human features on that robot, and that robot was now trying to hunt me down. And exactly after she told me all this, the robot, whose name was Metaton, burst through the wall. Metaton forced me to participate in some deadly game show, in which I had to answer all his questions correctly, or I die. Fortunately, Alphys knew all the answers, so after cheating through the questions, I got out unharmed. And after all that, Alphys helped me through the hotlands until I encountered Metaton again. But this time, he forced me to be a part of his cooking show, where I had to do some weird mini game to obtain this last ingredient. Then Alphys proceeded to help me through the hotlands when I encountered Metaton again. This time, he forced me to be a part of his new show, where he revealed that I had to defuse all the bombs he had placed in various items before the timer ran out. And with the help of Alphys, I defused all the bombs safely. I continued onward when I encountered a spider lady, who believed I hated spiders, and because of that, she hated me. After not attacking her for long enough, she was convinced I didn't hate spiders, and let me go. Then I encountered Metaton AGAIN, and Alpha saved me again, and we get it. Then I got some really tough monsters thrown at me, but I got through, and then finally, actually got to fight Metaton. Metaton's goal was to get my soul and leave the underground to entertain the entire world. But after I gave him the highest ratings he's ever seen, Metaton got some fan messages telling him they'll miss him, which made Metaton stay in the underground, letting me pass through since he had no need for my soul anymore. As I progressed, I came into a house that looked familiar, but when I entered, all I found was Flowey telling me his life story, but I didn't really care, so I just moved on. He just kept on talking, but as I encountered him for the last time, he seemed scared, like I was the dangerous one. I ignored it, and found myself in a beautiful, lit-up hall, where I found... Sans. What do you mean? No, I have never hurt a single soul in my entire life, I... No. No, 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 what have I done? 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 No, 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 no. It was you. You did this. I'll kill you. Hey.